Would you live in a greener lifestyle if you could make money from it? Hmm, that may be possible if a government proposal for personal carbon emissions allowances is implemented under the scheme. Everyone in the UK would be allocated an annual carbon allowance. Stored electronically, rather like a supermarket loyalty card, points would be deducted every time we buy or use non-renewable energy. For example, using electricity to power appliances in the home. Or travelling somewhere by plane. Or even buying petrol for your car on the forecourt. Now, any points left over could then be sold back to a central bank. Are you still with us? And people who need more, like motorists who had used their allocations, could then pay for a top-up. On top of paying for the petrol or the electricity, yes. etc. We're here to discuss the proposals. Our Dr. Mary Hillman from the Policy Studies Institute and James Woodhausen, who's a professor of forecasting innovation at De Montfort University. Good morning to you both. It's um well, it's a very intriguing idea, but will it work? Mia, let's start with you. Well, I first proposed the idea in 1990, and I'm delighted that the government is now seriously addressing this as uh, an option. I believe it to be the only option for the future of mankind. The planet, as you know, is deteriorating in terms of its condition, and the only way in which it can be addressed is not through the medium of wishful thinking that technology can ride to the rescue or, or that somehow or other we can I exhort or persuade people to modify their lifestyles to the extent required. And the solution that I've proposed is, of course, on the basis of personal carbon rationing. Right. James, that's the only option? No, I don't believe so. I think the whole attempt to make us feel guilty about what we're doing is very misguided and really we ought to be focusing on supply side innovations rather than finger wagging every time you boil a cup of tea. Supply side innovations? Well, we need better power stations, we need tidal power, we need nuclear power, we need every kind of thing that makes a difference so that we can be more thoughtless about energy use and more thoughtful about the planning of future energy supply. See, it's, in, in some senses, some people would say it's a nice idea, maybe it's completely impracticable. For instance, why would people who live in the country who have to drive 10 miles to get to their uh, shops would be penalised for that. People who have to travel abroad on business and go across the Atlantic would presumably be penalised for that as well. So how would you ever get it to work? Well, give me another solution to the serious problem of the fact that climate change is occurring. But that's not to say how your system, just saying well, other was, others wouldn't work doesn't mean that yours would. Well, uh, the detail can't be explained in the, in, in within a, a minute or two. It is outlined in the report that, uh, in the book, uh, the Penguin book I wrote called How We Can Save the Planet, and the detail is given there. The propositions that James has put forward, of course, are in no way invalidated by the concept of personal carbon rationing. In fact, it would drive the solutions that he is putting forward as people learn to live within the ration. Well, I, I, you know, I'm really surprised that a man so intelligent as David Miliband could come up with a proposal that's very similar to Margaret Thatcher's doctrine that we all take in, uh, uh, in each other's washing, you know, that we can all make money at home if we just exchange but don't things. we each have a personal responsibility? No, I don't think we do. You know, the responsibility of society is to build better power plants. That's where the carbon emissions yeah. take place. And it's all very well to sort of feel good and holy when you haven't spent a lot of uh, carbon, but it's finger-wagging and moralising yes, about I mean, everyday behaviour. This is Michael Sherratt's point from, from Worcester. May I put this to you? He says, the idea of having the cart is ridiculous. Once again, it's a case of the Labour government abrogating its responsibilities to the country. Lead by example. Well, uh, l let me draw an analogy here with 1939, when, with the prospect of war with uh, Nazi Germany, uh, food rationing was introduced here by a Conservative government with all party support because it was recognised recognised that we can't go it alone, so to speak, in terms of uh, encouraging people perhaps to eat less or to grow their own vegetables or to vary their diet so that we're not so dependent upon imported food. It was recognised that the only fair way of uh, dealing with a commodity, a basic commodity in short supply, was on the basis of equal shares. So we all had, as I recall from my childhood, we each had equal ration right. books. Right, Jim, very, very briefly, because we're out of time. Well, you know, you can't compare what's coming with carbon change with the Second World War, and if we do look at the Second World War... It might be more War, serious than that. No, I don't it think is. so. It's not at that level of, of, of danger. <laughs> and if you look at the Second World War, it wasn't just a question of rationing, as Labour would have us believe. We built Spitfires 24 hours a day for uh, six years, where they went through 17 different versions. Where are the supply-side innovations like that right. nowadays? Mm. James Woodhouse and Mayor Hillman, thank you both very much. Thank you very much indeed.